Hello, my name is John O'Neill and I make biodiesel. Today we're going to be looking at viscosity. Viscosity has become very important since engine management systems and common rail diesel engines are much fussier of fuel than they used to be and one of the things they won't tolerate is high viscosity in a fuel. The falling ball viscometer works on the, a very simple principle. A small ball is dropped into the fuel here at the tube and falls one meter to the bottom. You time how long it takes to fall one meter and you put it into a simple formula called Stokes formula and you get a viscosity figure. Just to take a moment and see how the viscometer has been constructed. The main tube is a piece of PVC uh, transparent hose. Uh, it's the same braided hose as I use on my biodiesel processors. This is one inch internal diameter. At the top here, I have a short piece of one inch pipe, an inch by half inch plumbing uh, fitting, and then a short length of half inch pipe. The same arrangement I have at the bottom, uh, but this time I fitted a half inch lever valve so that I can shut it off and contain the liquid in the tube. As you can see, I have fitted my viscometer to a wooden stand with adjustable legs so that I can move it around my workshop. But you can just as easily fix this to a wall or any vertical surface. Before we can measure the viscosity of a liquid, we need to know the density of that liquid. To do that, you need a digital kitchen scales, just accurate to one gram, and you need a jug or a graduated cylinder uh, which will hold one litre of liquid. So take your chosen liquid, in this case my um, synthetic kerosene, and carefully pour it in to the one litre mark. Be as accurate as you can about pouring to exactly one litre. These are the balls that I have found most suitable for this. They are airsoft pellets, can be bought virtually anywhere, uh, and these are 6mm in diameter and 0.12 grams. So from that we can work out their density. They're very uniform. Uh, I've weighed many of them and they always come out exactly the same and they're almost perfectly round so they're ideal for our purposes. So we've filled the tube with our fuel, in this case synthetic kerosene, and I'm going to drop the ball in through the top and time how long it takes to pass through that zone to that zone. I'm using an ordinary mobile phone. Most of them have quite a good stopwatch um, facility in the phone. So I start by dropping in the ball. And this one took 4.79 seconds. Now, if you're doing this, especially the first time, couple of times you do it, you should probably take three or maybe even five timings and then average them. And they should all be within about a tenth of a second of each other. 